Hello everybody and welcome back to LMM and if you're enjoying what you're seeing on the channel at the moment how about giving this video a like and maybe subscribing to the channel to help us grow and perhaps even check out our Patreon. Many of you by now will have checked out my last miniature steam engine video that was sent to me by my friends over at Engine DIY Shop and to say that I wasn't particularly impressed is something of an understatement but they were undeterred by my review and decided to send me a Christmas present which is this in this box here. Now I quite like this it's all very Christmassy it's in the traditional green with father Christmases and Christmas trees and all the symbols of Christmas all over it and most importantly just there on the front it says to me from engine DIY shop so without any further ado let's open it up and see exactly what we've got to deal with all right well that's very festive isn't it we have got some father Christmas stickers that's great and some other Christmassy stickers well that's wonderful and a hint to what we've been sent because that there says steam car now this appears to be the only documentation in it so let's open up and see exactly what it is there we go it is indeed a steam car with a very loose interpretation upon the car but it is a steam four wheeled design now this is a CAD drawing of it rather than the actual thing and it gives me some very useful information Notably, it is steam model car and it is for ages 14 or above. Here we go. This is the only instructions that come with this and it's, well, beautifully vague. It does have some key features though over the last model I had because this one has a safety valve. It has an anti-scold handle, which I can only assume is going to be for steering. It tells me the flywheel running direction tells me how much water to put in but what's beautiful about that is not a absolute amount it hey 30 mil to 50 mil I don't know whatever you fancy which already puts the fear of whatever in me that it's not a this boiler is designed to take x amount it could be this much it could be this much Ooh, who knows and then we have the information so I've got the sizes of it it is 270 by 110 by 150 mil it has a minimum turning radius of 620 mil it suggested having the car move in a circular motion as opposed to what exactly? <laughs> Just upside down? Be careful not to dry burn the boiler. Great, because it doesn't actually say anywhere how much fuel to put in versus how much water to put in. So careful not to run the boiler dry. Brilliant. Pay attention to safety and prevent scolding throughout the process. Well, that's the safety done. <laughs> that's useless instructions. Let's see what we've actually got. So. In the top of this, there is the alcohol dispenser. So presumably we fill that up. Does it have any markers on it? So we've got an idea how much goes into it. No, nothing at all. And now we can take this out. So, oh, actually. You know what? This is quite smart. So what do we have here? Well, it is a four wheeled engine. Oh, OK, so my first disappointment is the fact I don't appear to be able to steer it. You just set the wheels and hope for the best. It has a sticker on the front that says Merry Christmas. <laughs> then here, very little safety valve, but safety valve nonetheless in the correct place on top of the boiler. It is a tiny boiler as well, which appears to be held together by a load of these bolts going around the side. And then some of them go to be the supports that go to the bottom of it. That's quite interesting. So the steam passageway comes off here, runs to the cylinder through that, and then there's a return. Now, interestingly, the return goes down through the fire and then back to the chimney, which is here. So I suppose that's been done to make sure that it doesn't spit out water as it's going along to dry the steam. Generally, if you're going to superheat steam, you do it as it goes to the cylinder because that gives you more energy. It puts more energy into that steam by drying it out and making it dry steam or superheated steam and it increases the pressure. I have never seen anything do it on the reverse. That makes that, I guess it is just to dry that steam. So when it comes out the chimney, we've just got steam rather than water spitting out of it. It's been fitted with this little rubber band around the motion. So that's, I guess, to just hold it in place. Yeah, spoiler alert, that's actually vitally important. But actually, you know what? Credit where credit's due. That sounds beautiful. There's, that's very smooth. And the machining actually on all of this looks really good. Ah, looks can be so deceiving. It looks like there's a roller bearing in there. And that turns over beautifully. What's also interesting 
is that only one of the rear wheels is driven. So it's actually got a kind of working, not really diff, but means it will go around corners without skidding. These wheels are very, very thin and skeletal. So it's basically a firebox here with a chimney built onto it, the boiler floating above that, a quite nice looking engine. Now this is going to be a single oscillating cylinder. So the steam comes in along this pipe here and gives you a stroke down. And then the momentum of the firewheel brings it back up, moving this across to the exhaust area where the steam will be exhausted. And then it will come back down and push again. When it's in that position to exhaust, it shuts the port for the steam coming in. I wish there was a way to steer it, but actually it's, it looks quite nice. So at the bottom of it, everything is just bolted on with the same Allen key design. There's a couple of rivets. Oh, <laughs> I like, I know this isn't anything important because it's a firebox, but one of the rivets on my firebox isn't quite in right. So if that was a, a steam part, I would be a little bit concerned. Um, although it does make me fear for the rest of it if they haven't managed to put one riveting correctly. There's no way to control the steam whatsoever. As soon as you've got steam and you kick this into go, it will just charge away. The wheels are held on with three little bolts around them. This one, my tire has got slightly damaged, but I can live with that. The chimney is also quite smart. I like the fact it comes out at the top. It's just a bit better than being a straight piece of pipe. And then obviously we have a rubber band drive off this. So in all in all, it's a pretty basic steam engine with no way of controlling it once it goes. I suppose they are correct. Just set it in a direction and set it off. So with that, I suppose it's time to take off this rubber band. Ignore what I'm saying. That rubber band is crucially important. And yes, I know how ridiculous that sounds, but bear with me. We'll go through the prep, get this thing lit. And as it's coming around, I'll explain just why this rubber band is so important. So presumably we just put that in there. And that is my anti-scold handle. As the engine comes fully assembled, all you have to do is add some distilled water to the boiler from the vague instructions. I've decided to split the difference and put in 40 milliliters. Then make sure the safety valve is working and hasn't seized and install it into the boiler. And with that on, it's time to fill the burner. You use this little squeezy bottle and for some reason, I decided to attempt this in expert mode. Most normal people will get a funnel so you don't spill it everywhere. Once you've filled your bottle, you put the lid on it like so. And then you can use that to squirt the methylated spirits or other alcohol fuel into the burner until it's full. And if you did want to put it out when it's alight, and the assumption is we just put that in like that to get rid of the flame. Also included in the box is this stand so you can huff the engine off the ground and run it without it actually huffing to travel anywhere. And just like that, you're ready to light the fire. And with the fire lit, it's normally time to do some oiling up but the limited instructions don't mention doing anything at all, so there's nothing to do. Now, you would probably at this time be tempted to remove this rubber band. Do not remove this rubber band. If you remove this rubber band, the engine will not work. Yes, really. I know how ridiculous it sounds that a steam engine needs a rubber band to function, but this actually is the case. If you remove the rubber band, the machining is so poor that the cylinder will not seal against the face, which means that it is not a closed system, meaning the boiler cannot build pressure because it's venting it to atmosphere. And as it can't build pressure, it won't be able to run the engine. And it's not even like the torrents are a little bit out. You can physically rock the cylinder, but worse, you can actually see the gap between the cylinder and the face. Even those with the most tentative grasp of how a steam engine works would understand that these things need to be steam tight, which of course is why there's a rubber band. Apparently, the purpose of that rubber band is to actually hold the cylinder onto the face. Most contemporary models, like this Mamod with an oscillating cylinder, have a bolt with a spring that holds the cylinder onto the face. If you undo the bolt, the cylinder falls off. And it's that pressure of the spring that holds the cylinder against the face, enough to be steam tight, but enough for it to oscillate and move between the steam in and the steam out port on the face. This model does in truth have the same thing. However, there is not enough play on the bolt for fine adjustment and the spring is too stiff. And so if you do it up as tight as it will go at the end of the thread, you will indeed bring everything close enough 
for it to be steam tight and the engine will run. The spring, however, is so stiff there is too much resistance and the machining on the faces is too poor for this to be effective, dramatically robbing the engine of any power it has, which also dramatically impacts its speed. And an engine like this, in order to move the car, needs that inertia from running the flywheel at speed to huff enough energy to get the car to move. Running this slowly, it simply does not half the power. But at least at this point, the engine was working. And if I sound annoyed during all of this, it's because I really am. This is really poor. More so, on the instructions, nowhere does it mention do not remove the crucial rubber band. And that's really, really, really annoying. Once it had finished this feeble attempt at running and a cool down, I removed the cylinder. You can see where the face has been scored by the movement back and forth. This is normally a sign that the cylinder is being held too tightly onto the face and it's scoring. But if I had it any looser, it refused to be steam tight. This was the only way to make it work and just shows the poor machining involved, which was overcome by, yep, you're right, the humble rubber band. And so to get this engine to run, I had to disassemble the steam pipe, which are all on nice screw fittings, by the way, and install a new rubber band. Yes, I know it sounds ridiculous, but this thing actually does need the rubber band to operate. By the time I got the machine reassembled and ready to run again, I'd wasted over two hours of trying to make the engine work. And my displeasure didn't stop there. In the short amount of time that it had actually run, the flywheel had now become loose on the shaft. So I had to get the Allen keys out, which admittedly they do include as part of the set, and tighten that up when it hadn't even run at full speed. I'm sorry, that is just so very My fault finding continued as the rear axle was moving because the retaining bolt was loose. The one on the other side is missing. I don't know if it's meant to be there, but regardless, there isn't one. Before I could light up again to test whether my fix had worked, there's no way to find out how much water is left inside the boiler, so I had to drain it all down and refill from empty. And I think in the USA, it's actually a legal requirement to have a sight glass on the boiler regardless of size or pressure, which means that this wouldn't be legal in the USA. Regardless, having refilled the boiler and relit the burner, I added a healthy dollop of steam oil to help the cylinder on its face and sat back and waited for something to happen. This time, the signs were a lot more positive. And finally, after so much mucking around, the engine was doing what it was meant to do straight out of the box. And actually, it was running quite well. So I thought I'd take it to a large open space outdoors and see what it would do. The answer, rather predictably, was absolutely nothing. Uh, apart from attracting a load of weird looks from passers-by. Well, that was fairly disappointing, wasn't it? Taking this outside was a complete waste of time. By the time you factor in the wind, that little burner just doesn't have enough energy in it to heat that boiler and make steam. I went through two full tanks and it wasn't even too hot to touch, so I was a long way away from making steam. So I tried again indoors on the hard floor of the kitchen. And amazingly, it actually worked relatively well. Of course, there's no way to stop it once it's gone away from you, so there were some incidents. The other problem is you can't control the steering, so it just straightens itself out. It doesn't continue round in a corner. The other big problem was it seems to run out of steam very fast. It doesn't have a very long, prolonged run. But it does do what it says on the tin. It is indeed a working steam car. The, what annoys me about this, I think, is it could have been so much better. It shows such potential. I just think it needs a bigger, more powerful burner and boiler, and then it might actually work. And I've seen this boiler design. This is a kit. I'm sure I've seen this on the website that you can build this and that engine. And they've just taken that and asked it to move itself. So I really, really want to like it. But it's just not quite there. That said, again, it's 150 quid. It's a working steam engine for 150 quid. So if you want something just to sit on the mantelpiece on its little stand and occasionally fire it up and just watch it tick over, sure, I would actually say it's not bad value. For a steam car that drives itself around, well, if any of you do buy one, let me know if you manage to make it drive itself around. And I appreciate this is about as cheap as you can go for a steam engine, actually have it do something, but it misses the mark on the fact that it 
doesn't quite deliver on what it's meant to do. It's a nice idea, it just falls short. I wouldn't recommend buying it, equally I wouldn't steer you away from it. It is a steam engine, it's 150 quid, it works, it's relatively interesting. It's not something that puts the fear of God into me, but that machining there and the rubber band is just unforgivable. Utterly, utterly unforgivable. I'm just not impressed with the builders of this. I understand, again, it's cost saving, not tough to machine that to a tolerance so it actually works, but what a terrible piece of design. And what's really upsetting about this and what upsets me most is I had really high hopes getting it out of the box. I thought it looked quite good. A single stroke of that is six millilitres of capacity. That boiler takes only 50 millilitres of water at max, and I think that absolutely brims it. So that is massive compared to the boiler. If you think of a conventional steam locomotive or something, say an Andrew Barclay, you've got, say, what, 14 inch cylinders versus a boiler that is several feet in both length and diameter. The boiler is less than 10 times bigger in capacity than that cylinder. And I appreciate it's not using all of that and it's not displacing all of it every time. It's a too big a cylinder, a too smaller burner and a too smaller boiler. If it had a much larger burner in it and it was going to run for a lot less time, I think it could do something. And I think that might be the way to overcome it is to put a larger burner in there. Uh, maybe a traditional mammoth one in there and we might get somewhere with it but then we totally muck up that ratio of fuel to water and I imagine it would run out. So yes, not ideal but not absolutely appalling. So buyer beware, you could get it, you could run it and it will be a nice showpiece, just don't expect anything more from it. And with that, thank you very much for watching. And thank you to Engine DIY Shop for sending this through. It is an engine, it's not abysmal. That's where we are with this one. It's disappointing. It does at least operate without filling me with fear. And that's based on the other one, that's a high point. So thank you very much. It needs improving. But if you have enjoyed this one, how about clicking up there for the video of the dangerous engine and the one that scared the whatever out of me, or over there for when I had to look at a little mammod and went through Steam Engine 101 so you get an idea of what a proper little machine should be like compared to something like this. Will I try running this again? Yeah, I think I will. I think I will. Can I improve it? Mm, I don't even know where to start. <laughs>